So here I have a Bell South CI7112 visual director. And I made a video about this particular unit a couple weeks ago. And at the time I wasn't able to demonstrate call waiting deluxe using these feature buttons down here because I didn't have type two caller ID on my switch. And I'm happy to say now that I do have type two caller ID working on my switch. So it seemed uh, only natural to return to this now. And what I ended up doing for that was basically writing my own orange box script. Uh, I started taking a look at some of the things uh, that are around. So some of you might have seen this program before, SOB Orange Box, which uh, does what it looks like. It lets you spoof a call waiting. It also lets you spoof uh, type 1 call ID, which would be the call ID that you get between the first and second ring on, our, on an incoming call when the line is idle. And I'm not sure how useful that is because you can't really spoof that. Um, I guess you could if you had a lineman's test set and you were clipped onto somebody's line. Um, so I guess if you were beige boxing, then you could orange box type 1. But for the most part, when we talk about orange boxing, we're talking about type 2 caller ID, of course, which is called waiting caller ID, which is the mode that it's on here. So, uh, typical MDMF fields. What I was frustrated by was that uh, programs like this, uh, for one, this is a, a Windows program, so it's good for interactive use and playing around with, um, but not great if you want to connect it to an Astro system or something like that. And uh, not also one, because it's Windows only, and two, because it's not scriptable, it's not, you can't call this from a program and, and use this non-interactively. So the second thing was this only includes the standard field. So you see number, name, and the time and date. And uh, also implicit here is the presentation, which you can toggle with privacy. So that will basically go between out of area private and presentation allowed are available. And those are basically the four standard uh, parameters for MDMF caller ID. But there are other parameters like uh, redirecting number, redirecting reason, the call qualifier, which on this particular unit, it does have the ability to show that. Um, I think just because of the angle that this is currently at, it's not easy to see. But um, on this visual director, you can see that there's an LDC indicator there for long distance call. So this supports call, uh, call qualifier. The only call qualifier there is is long distance call. And for redirecting information, it supposedly tells you if a call has been forwarded to and if it was forwarded because the number called was busy. So that's interesting. Most lines obviously don't support that, or I should say that most caller ID generators, most orange, orange boxes, certainly. And uh, I'd be surprised if any ATA supported those parameters too. If you have a POTS line from an incumbent local exchange carrier, then they might be sending those parameters. Uh, they might not, though. Um, so it, it, that could have changed over the past 20, 25 years. But this unit does support that. So supposedly, if you send that to the to the unit, it will display that information in some way. That I haven't tested yet. But what I have tested is uh, what I ended up doing was basically writing my own type two caller ID generator or orange box. And that allows me to send the FSK needed in band and basically send call waiting caller ID. Uh, that was necessary because the way that this unit is configured 
It will not operate the call waiting deluxe buttons unless it has detected that there is a call waiting. And I think it gives you some period of time, either 30 seconds or a minute, something like that, to do something with that. After that, the buttons get disabled again. So you, it, it does need to recognize a call waiting. And if it gets an error, it won't let you operate the buttons either. So it needs to successfully receive call waiting in order to use those buttons. So when I was initially setting up call waiting deluxe, uh, I just tested manually uh, without one of these units. But now that it is working, it should work with this uh, unit. So on this unit, the flash relay is, is broken, or not the flash relay, but uh, one of the relays is, is broken. So on a call waiting through the FSK, and obviously it doesn't receive any of the data since it doesn't unbridge the line. Uh, so we'll be testing with uh, this visual director here, which um, uh, has the working relays, which will allow us to operate these feature buttons. I have uh, this phone here wired to the visual director. And then I have the visual director wired to this lineman's test set connection block. And the reason for that is so I can go into monitor mode on the butt set and uh, that will just allow us to hear some of the things that the unit is doing, which typically you wouldn't be able to hear. But uh, to show you that, if I go into talk mode to uh, actually originate a call, you can see that the light comes on on the visual director to indicate that the line is in use. So I'll turn that off, and actually I'll go into monitor mode. And... That will allow us to hear some of what it's doing. So, a brief word about how Call Waiting Deluxe works. All of these buttons send a hook flash. The flash obviously just sends a hook flash. The other four buttons, they will hook flash and send a certain DTMF digit, uh, depending on uh, which button you press. So, uh, the specification for this outlines it, and I consulted an Ameritech spec for this, but I believe drop is 7, send to voicemail or forward is 9, add caller is 3, and play hold message according to the spec is 8. But there is also a hold outlined in the spec, which is 6. And it's a bit misleading because to actually do what you would typically do, which is put the current call on hold, and switch the incoming call. Even with call waiting to locks, all you do is you flash. And it even says that in the in the manual for this product, call waiting to locks, it shows you how to operate the different feature buttons. And it just goes through each of them one by one. But if we go to the section on switching to the waiting call, it just says press the flash button. So it's just a regular flashlight always. Uh, in my case, I have this on Centrex with call hold. So I will need to actually dial the call hold code as well. But uh, if this was on a regular uh, line without call hold, you would just press the flash button and that would connect you. Either way, what you do as far as this unit is concerned is you press the flash button. And so the way that it works basically and I'm not 100% sure about this, but I'm 99% sure about this, is there is no special call waiting deluxe dial tone. But what happens is, um, because the DTMF is sent to the same uh, thing, if you will, right, that's listening, as you would if you flashed, right? So the way that it works is when you flash, there's like a, a, a second or so of silence. And these, uh, this unit will send the DTMF during that second of silence. And if nothing is sent during that second, and presumably if an invalid digit is sent as well, then it will do whatever a hook flash is supposed to do. So on a regular POTS line, it would, uh, for a call waiting to locks, 
or just call waiting in general, it would switch to the call waiting, the incoming call waiting. Uh, in my case, I'll get a recall dial tone because that's what happens if you flash during a call waiting. So I think that's enough talk about this um, to actually demonstrate the different features. So first I'll need to get a call up on this unit and it doesn't matter if it's incoming or if it's outgoing. So I'm just gonna make an outgoing call. And let's see here, is this audible? Yeah, it is audible. So you can hear that here as well as here. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I'll call that phone there. Okay, so we have one call up. And now at this point, if we go ahead and we call uh, this line with this phone, we will give ourselves a call waiting. And you'll see that come in here. So let me go ahead and do that now. Oh, I dialed the wrong number. <laughs> I dialed the number that this I'm used to this line, this phone being on. It's actually a different line now, so let me dial that number. I was wondering why it's ringing and I didn't hear anything. Okay, so there we go. And you might have heard the FSK on here as it was sent. And I can drop the, well actually first I'll flash and uh, just do it normally. Recall dial tone. Okay, so I just dialed the call hold code, which on my Centrex is 111. And I switched to uh, the call from this phone. So if I press a button, but if I dial on here, you don't hear that because it's on this call right now. Now I can flash again and dial the call hold again to switch call hold code again to switch back to this, uh, this call here. Now I'm back on this call here. So if I press the button, you don't hear that on the butt set. But if I dial here, you do hear that. So that's actually not using call waiting deluxe at all. You can do this on a regular POTS line. But that's just to demonstrate uh, the feature working in general, or the unit working in general. So I'm going to go ahead and hang up the call waiting now. Or the, the, the second call, I should say. It's not waiting anymore. And um, let's see. Yeah, the original call is still up. So what do I want to do? Let us... Uh, I guess we can drop the next call. So... Actually, it's not dropping the next call. The drop is a, is a little bit of a misnomer. What drop does is it will drop your existing call and switch to the call waiting. It won't drop the call waiting. Uh, the closest thing that there is to that would be the send to voicemail if you want to get rid of the waiting call. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a call waiting again. We got a call waiting. And I can use the drop button Okay, and you heard that there was a brief DTMF. You heard it flash, and then on the butt set, you heard a DTMF. So that was this unit flashing and sending a DTMF. In this case, it was a DTMF 7. And this guy got knocked back to dial tone because we dropped that call. And now we're on this call here with this line. Okay, so that is dropping a call, or sorry, dropping the existing call and taking the call waiting. Now note that this is, well, this is a call waiting deluxe way of doing it with flashing and, and pressing three. It isn't something you can't do without call waiting. 
um, it's, it's probably less common to do this, but if you're on an existing call and you want to drop that and then take the call waiting rather than put the current call on hold, you can just hang up. And when you hang up, that'll drop the existing call and um, it will let the waiting call ring through to your phone. So your phone will ring and when you answer it, you'll be connecting with the connected with the waiting caller. So this isn't new. I mean, it's a new way of doing it, but it does the same thing that you can already do without call waiting. So um, it's a little bit more convenient, I guess, because you don't have to hang up and then wait for your phone to ring again. So it's, it's quicker. Um, I'll give it that. But it's not like you can't do it without call waiting. Deluxe, uh, I should say. So these two features, um, switching to the new call and dropping the, the current one before switching to the new call, you can do without call waiting deluxe. Um, there isn't even a call waiting deluxe way of switching to the new call. That's just the same way as always. But dropping, there is a new way of, of doing that function uh, that is, is technically different. So, but it accomplishes the same thing. Anyways, um, the three new call waiting deluxe unique features are forward the call to what I would presume is either the regular call forward busy or the call forward don't answer number. Um, I'm not sure which one. On my system, I have it configured to be the call forwarding, uh, call forwarding uh, don't answer number, I'm pretty sure. So the call forwarding don't answer. And um, the play hold message is straightforward. That just, uh, what I have that set up to do is the waiting caller will hear a hold message and the call waiting beeps will stop. So you can wrap up your conversation without that being, uh, without that interrupting you every 10 seconds. And then you can just uh, take action on it later. Add caller is probably the most useful one that uh, creates a three-way call with the waiting call. So it's like a reverse three-way call, basically, which is actually a pretty useful thing. Um, you know, play hold message, okay, that could be helpful, but, um, you know, send to voicemail, I guess. I mean, if you have a call forwarding don't answer, that could happen anyway, right? So that might happen automatically anyway. You could just make it happen quicker. Again, drop and switch to the call waiting. Those already exist without call waiting deluxe. So, in my opinion, like, the only, like, really cool thing about calling in Deluxe is the add caller function. So, anyways, um, I'm going to hang up this call now. And I'm doing that because I don't think I actually have a call forwardy and don't answer number set up. So, I'm going to go ahead and forward my calls from this phone to this phone and um okay sorry i wasn't sure what the extension of that was for a second so i'm gonna go ahead and forward my uh no answer calls there um thought i should get a second dial tone Okay, there we go. Um, 2127. And. Okay, so the call is ringing in. And I'll answer it. Okay, so. And in order to actually make it forward. Well, actually, I don't have to. By default, I will forward after 60 seconds. You could reduce that by using the ring control feature, which is star four seven. But since I'm going to be manually operating that that function, um, I don't I don't need to to do that. Now it's called sent to voicemail. It's really just like uh, you know, it's it's whatever your call for any destination is. Typically voicemail, I don't have voicemail on this line, so I can't send it there. And for the purposes of demonstration, um, it probably makes sense to send it somewhere else anyway, because you can't really hear a call going to voicemail. So, I, I guess you would hear it on the calling line, but still. Anyways, let me uh, set up a call again. 
Okay, so that's set up. And we will do the send to voicemail function, which is really just a general forward function. Um, it's possible some phone companies just restricted that to whatever the voicemail number was, but whatever you want to forward, your don't answer calls to, so. Okay, sorry about that, my SD card filled up, but we're back now. And, okay, so I've activated call forwarding don't answer on this line, so let me go ahead and uh, set up a call. Whoops, must have dialed the wrong number. Okay, so we've got a call set up. And I'll go ahead and I will give myself a call waiting. Okay, so FSK. Calling Clardy. I can go ahead and forward that call to that phone. And now that call is ringing in here. So I can go ahead and answer it. Hello. Hello. I just I got, got forwarded, forwarded to you because somebody, somebody used the send to voicemail, voicemail function. With call waiting to Lux. Guess he didn't want to talk to me right now. So that's all there is to that feature. Again, it says send to voicemail, but it, it's a very it, it's a general forward feature. So you could have it forward to whatever you have your don't answer or busy calls set to forward to. The way I have it set up is that if you have a don't answer number it will forward to that. And if you don't, then it will just return busy tone, which seems like the most natural thing to do. It's probably how it was set up. It's also possible that they just would never have allowed you to have this service on your line without a number provision for that. Um, I'm trying to be flexible here, so that's my implementation at least. Uh, the next function uh, is the play hold message function. So for that, I'm gonna use this line actually. Um, I still have that original call up. So I'm gonna go ahead and call myself, give myself a call waiting from this phone. Got a call waiting, I'll play hold message. The party you have called is on the phone. Please hold and they will be with you shortly. And then it goes uh, back to ring back. Uh, you can hear a different uh, ring back here. That's because I have uh, what's it called? I have uh, like call waiting, call waiting ring back or something on my Centrex. I think that's what the feature is called. So uh, you can tell if your call is waiting or if it's actually ringing into an idle line. Now you can see that it still says wait because it knows that when you play a hold message, that call is still waiting. So at some point, if I wanted to add the caller, and now it just conference the call. So So you can see that, uh, yeah, we have a three-way call, and it's basically the opposite of an out of a regular three-way call where you conference an existing call to an outgoing. With the add caller feature, you basically conference an incoming to an existing. So that's a that's actually this is probably my favorite part of call waiting deluxe, is if you can see that, you know. Say you're talking to a colleague, right? And you know that your boss is going to be calling uh, to talk about a, a project or something, right? And and then your boss calls, and you see it's your boss calling on your on your screen. Rather than you 
doing what you typically do without call waiting deluxe, which is a flash, maybe dial the call hold code, and then you talk to, to your boss, then you go back to talking to your colleague, and you're like, hey, you know, you have those uh, figures that the boss needs, whatever, right? Um, rather than going back and forth like that, just conference the boss in and have a three-way call. I mean, that's kind of the, the background behind a lot of these features is things that save time. And this add caller feature is actually really useful. So even if the other four features probably will never get used, um, you know, I can't really... The drop feature, I mean, you might want to wrap up your call and, and just go to the waiting call, right? Sent to voicemail. Um, honestly, that's just kind of rude. Like, I guess um, if you don't want to talk to somebody, you could you could do that. Um, flash and, and switch the other call. That's pretty standard, right? But you would do that anyway. Play hold message. I mean, what are you going to do? Keep talking for another five minutes before you switch to the to the incoming call? Um, I guess it's helpful if, if maybe you got to wrap up and you have like, you need to talk for maybe two more minutes, right? I mean, that could be nice, right? Um, because typically people might rate, wait five, ten ringbacks for somebody to answer, but if you don't answer after ten rings, uh, people are probably going to give up. So, plain hold message, I mean, okay, I guess that's useful. I have to, I'll, I'll grant it that. That could be useful if maybe you want to wait two minutes before answering that call because you really just need to finish up this important conversation, but you're almost done and you just know it's going to take two more minutes. You can use the play hold message. And then add caller. Um, that one's generally useful. I mean, I can think of a lot of situations where that would be useful. So that is that is a, a very nice feature. So that's basically a demonstration of all of the call waiting deluxe features. That's really all there is to it. Again, you heard it on the butt set. All I was doing each time you activate one of these features, or whenever you press one of these four buttons, is this unit performs a hook flash. And then you could hear it very quickly, almost immediately. It sends a DTM out. And that it, that's because, well, obviously you don't want to waste time, but you've only got a second to do that. So you send that DTM out fast uh, because otherwise it's going to time out after a second and then do it out for just a regular flash without doing anything immediately would do. So I don't know how many people, and I realize I'm still on the three-way call, so I don't know how much echo there is. But let me let me tear this down. So yeah, and now we're just back to uh, that call that was up. But I'm gonna go ahead and discount this as well. So that's call waiting deluxe. I don't know how many places in the United States you can even still get this feature. Um, it was kind of a big thing. I mean, this unit is from. 1995 or 1998 so it was it was like this big new feature then sort of like adsi and now pretty much everyone's forgotten about it mm, not to say that adsi isn't useful it is but this is a very uh very nice thing that very few people know about i mean call waiting is everywhere kind of these days but call waiting deluxe um not sure about that the other thing that I, I didn't remember until just now is that there is something called Advanced Call Waiting Deluxe. And Advanced Call Waiting Deluxe basically allows you to specify uh, the, the treatment that the call waiting will receive in advance of you getting that call waiting. So you can, you can use these buttons during a call waiting, but if you want to do it before, um, you can star seven six. And I'll do eight for play hold message. And, and now if I get a call waiting, so I still get the call waiting, but it immediately does whatever you specified in advance. 
So that is Advanced Call Waiting Deluxe. There's really nothing more to it. It just allows you to do that in advance. Anyways, that's everything that I know about Call Waiting Deluxe. Uh, if you are if you have this feature in your area, um, it's a really nice feature in my opinion. Um, but I'm really excited to, to have this available now. It's, uh, it's uh, going to be great to be able to use these features.